Section 7.5, the dependence of cell potential on concentration. E cell is also going to determine K. So there's a link, like we said, between delta G and E, and there's also a link between G and K. So if we know E, we know K. So if we know delta G is equal to minus NFE. That's our electrochem relationship to delta G, our free energy. And if we know delta G is also going to be equal to minus RT ln K, which we learned at the end of last chapter, we can use delta G as the middleman and say delta NFE is equal to minus RT ln K. And those two things will cancel each other out. We'll do a little bit of rearranging, so we're just going to isolate E cell. And we say that E cell is going to be RT divided by NF times the natural log of k. And if we assume that the values for r is a constant and Faraday's constant is also a constant and our temperature is going to be at standard temperature, so we're going to take our r, t, and f and kind of ball all those guys together into one new constant. And then rather than doing a natural log, we're going to convert that guy to a, a base 10 log. So we're going to take these things and kind of all convert them. We're going to get 0 0.2303 log of K. And so we can say our E cell is going to be uh, 0 0.0592, and we're going to see this 0 0.0592 a lot, Ta divided by N times the log of K. And we can rearrange that and say K is going to be 10 to the N times E cell divided by 0 0.0592 volts. Right. So, pretty easy connection there to make between K and E. Let's see if you can try one on your own. What is the value of the equilibrium constant when the cell potential is found to be minus 0.29 volts for a transfer of two moles of electrons? Now, just kind of looking at it, right, we see this guy is going to be a minus 0.29 volts. Right? So we know this is the non-spontaneous reaction. Right? We would know that delta G is going to be positive, and we would know if delta G is positive, then K should be less than 1. All right? So these are all less than 1. Figure out which one it is. Pause. Okay, welcome back. Yeah, it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Um, so this is kind of our... Now we're link, we've gone from the link and now we've got the triforce, right? So delta G, that's our thermodynamic stuff. It's gonna to relate to both K over here and it's gonna to relate to E cell and there's an interconnection between E and G, minus NFE, and between G and K, RT, L and K, and we can combine them together and say E cell is gonna be 0 0.0592 divided by N times the log of K. And the reason why it's log of K and not natural log is just historical reasons for it being easier to compute a natural base 10 log on a slide rule than a natural log. Uh, spontaneous reaction, delta G is going to be less than zero. Our E cell is going to be bigger than zero, positive, And our K is going to be bigger than one. In a non-spontaneous redox reaction, our delta G will be positive. Our E cell will be negative, And our K will be equal to zero. So uh, in a, for a concentration, an increase in the concentration of a reactant will favor the forward reaction and thus increase the driving force on the electrons. Our cell potential will increase. An increase in the concentration of the product will oppose the forward reaction and decrease the cell potential. All right, so for the reaction that we've got, predict whether E cell is going to be smaller or larger than E cell for the following cases. If I've got aluminum, Solid reacting with manganese 2 plus to give me aluminum 3 plus, that's the oxidation. And manganese solid, that's the reduction. We've got an E cell of, of 0.48 volts. If I've got an aluminum concentration that's gone up, an Al3 plus concentration that's gone up to, point two, uh, to 2 molar from 1 molar, in case A, what's going to happen? And then B, I've increased my manganese concentration from 1 to 3 molar. 
Right? In part A, the concentration has been raised above 1. It's going to oppose the cell reaction, so we're going to add to our product side. It's going to reduce our cell potential. If our reactant concentration goes up, our cell concentration, our E cell value is going to be bigger than 0.48 because we've got more reactants. And we can actually make something that's called a concentration cell. Um, I'm kind of surprised that your book goes over this. It's, they're not super duper common, but you know, anytime you've got an uneven distribution of things, you have a potential. And if you've got a potential, you can probably exploit it to do some work. So here we've got uh, compartments which have the same components, but they're at different concentrations. And the difference in concentration is the only factor that produces that cell potential. And the voltages are usually pretty small. Right, so concentration cell with a 1 molar copper on the right and 0.01 molar concentration on the left is only going to give us 0.05 volts. So it's not a lot of volts. <clears throat> but what's going to happen in that cell is that one side is less concentrated than the other. And so nature wants to even those things out, right? So it's going to want to drop the concentration over here. This concentration should decrease, and this concentration should increase. And it's going to do that until those two concentrations are going to be equal. So let's look at this one where we've got a concentration cell with 0.05 molar iron 2 plus and 0.1 molar iron 2 plus on the other side, which way are the electrons going to flow? Well, I've got to make more iron plus on the left-hand side, don't I? So I've got to increase the concentration over here by oxidizing some of my iron solid into Fe2 plus. And over here, I've got to reduce this concentration. I've got to take some of my Fe two plus and make it into iron solid. Well, this means this is the reduction that's got to happen, and this guy's got to be the oxidation. And so once I know which one's the reduction, I know which one's the cathode and which one, the opposite one's going to be the anode. The concentrations of the Fe2 plus ion in the two compartments can eventually be equalized by transferring electrons from the left compartment to the right, to the low concentration, to the, from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. This is going to cause the Fe2 plus to be formed in the left compartment, increasing the concentration. And the iron metal will be deposited on the right, reducing the Fe2 plus ion concentration on the right. Since the flow is left to right, the oxidation occurs in the left compartment, the anode, and the reduction occurs on the right on the cathode. All right, so super duper important concentration-based equation coming up. And that is this Nernst equation. So given the relationship between the cell potential and the concentration in the cell components, we said that delta G naught is going to be related to our real delta G under non-standard conditions. But we're going to adjust that based by RT ln Q. Right? So this was our, we got to make a real world adjustment to what if I don't have standard conditions? What if my temperature changed? Right? What if I've got more reactants than products? What if I am not at equilibrium? Right? And that was one of our key things from last chapter. We can combine this equation with our E cell stuff and say, well, if delta G under non-standard conditions is equal to N times F times E under non-standard conditions, and our standard state delta G is, minus equal, is equal to minus NFE naught under standard conditions, we can combine those guys, right? <clears throat> Get minus NFE is equal to minus NFE naught plus RT ln Q, and dividing each side by that minus nf, which is a constant, so we don't need this guy anymore, we can say that our real-world non-standard condition, our non-standard state, E, is going to be whatever our table value is, and then we're going to adjust it based on our concentrations, right, and the temperature, Right? So we're going to adjust it based on our concentrations and our temperatures. So this is very, very similar to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, where we've got some pKa, right? 
PKA. And we're going to adjust it in a loggy kind of way based on what our concentrations of our acid and base are. So it's similar to that where we've got some sort of central value that we're going to adjust upwards or downwards based on whether we got more acids or base in the case of our uh, henderson hasselbach or whether we've got more products or more reactants in our case of our E-cell. Right? And this is called the Nernst equation. Right? This is the Nernst equation. It's a very, very famous equation. So under standard conditions where we've got this concentration cell and they've got things that are equal concentration, there's no difference in our concentrations. So our cell potential should be zero. There's nothing that is out of balance. Right, it's at equilibrium. No work can be done. E cell is zero. Over here under non-standard conditions, well, now I've got two molar copper on the right and 0.01 molar copper on, on the copper two plus on the left. I don't have standard conditions. Uh, I no longer have E cell being zero. Right? I've got some sort of difference in chemical potential that's arising because of those concentrations. Right. I can exploit the fact that nature is going to strive to level those concentrations out, and I've got a potential that I can measure. And this was developed by uh, Walter Hermann Nernst. He was a German chemist and a famously grumpy old man uh, who was known for his theories behind the calculation of chemical affinity as embodied by the third law of thermodynamics, for which he won the 1920 Nobel Prize in chemistry. He helped establish the modern field of physical chemistry and contributed to electrochemistry, thermodynamics, solid state chemistry, and photochemistry. Uh, he's known for developing the Nernst equation. Uh, he developed an electric piano, a neo Bechstein flugel, in 1930, replacing the sounding board with radio amplifiers. So he's the progenitor of uh, EDM. He's, he's developed electronic instruments. So uh, we kind of owe <laughs> Skrillex owes his fame to uh, William Hermann Nernst. Nernst would be absolutely appalled. The piano used electromagnetic pickups in the same way as an electric guitar. He also developed the Nernst glower, which is a source used in infrared spectroscopy. So he did a lot of stuff and was really famous justly for it, but was also kind of a jerk. All right, so the Nernst equation... Um, is often in a form that is still valid at 25 degrees C. So the thing we looked at before said, okay, we've got an RT and an NF. We're going to do something similar in a natural log. We're going to kind of roll some of those constants together, and we're going to get this 0.0592 again, and a natural log, and taking our natural log into a log base 10. So it becomes not RT. Uh, NF LN of Q. It becomes 0.0592 over N log of Q. So we're adjusting our, we did the subtraction from a table by our concentration. So it's used to calculate the potential in which some or all the components are not are in their standard states, which in any chemical reaction, as soon as you start it going, it's out of standard state. That's calculate the potential calculated is the maximum potential before any current flow has occurred. So anytime you put that current up and you're not using superconductor, you're going to get a little bit of a hit, but it won't be much. So let's calculate the cell potential for the a cell made out of copper, copper 2 plus, Ag plus, and Ag, where our concentrations of silver and copper are both 0.1 molar. So our cell reaction is going to be that we've got copper solid and two Ag pluses giving us copper 2 plus and Ag. Right? Um, our E cell that we're going to get by looking up on the table will be 0.46 volts. The number of electrons that in, are involved in that process will be two. So we're going to get two electrons coming on, away from the copper. When it does that, each silver can only pick up one electron. So we've got two electrons that are involved. It's a two electron process. Uh, if we write out our regular old K expression where we've got products over reactants, like in here, copper is going to be the product and this one doesn't show up because it's a solid. And Ag is our reactant, and this copper doesn't show up because it's a solid. So our K term, or Q term, is going to be copper 2 plus divided by Ag squared, because we still have this 2 in here. So this is just your regular old K expression. Right? And it's going to be 0.46 volts, because that was our E naught. And we're going to adjust it in a kind of loggy way, 
based on some constants and the fact that I've got two electrons involved and where are my specific concentrations. So we'll get 0.46 minus 0.0295 and then log of, of 0.1 over 0.1 squared and we end up with 0.43 volts. What was going to happen if we really change our concentrations? If we change our concentrations down to 0 0.001 molar, right? We've gone from one molar under standard state, right? Our standard state was going to be 0.46 volts. So if you do the Nernst equation for this very, very low concentration, right? This is our one molar version. We gave us 0.46. That's our E naught. And we'll do 0.059 divided by 2, log of 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.001 squared, and we get 0.37 volts. So it's going down, but is it going down really fast? No. So this is why when you've got batteries, right, they're going to go and they're going to drop power over a while, and eventually you'll get to a point where it just rolls off. Right? So your concentration or your time running it and this is your volts, right? So batteries are going to be pretty steady, and then all of a sudden they're just going to die on you. And this is what's happening, right? So your concentration is going down, right? Your uh, amount of products would be going up, and so your voltage is changing, but it's still really, really close to 0.46 volts, right? And you change that by one, two, three, four orders of magnitude. It is one one-thousandth of where it was before. So... You know, not much of a change in the potential, but it is going to keep going. And eventually you will get to a point where delta G is zero, right? You've got an E cell of zero. The amount of work we can get is zero. And our Q will become K. All right, let's do another Nernst example. And so we're going to describe the cell based on the following half reactions where we've got vanadium oxide reacting with and I and uh, acid giving us uh, vanadium um, monoxide and water and we've got zinc 2 plus and an electron giving us zinc so these are both the reductions we've got two reductions here right what are we going to do for our Nernst equation where we've got a concentration set that is not so it's non-standard conditions how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we got to do is figure out what E naught is. So I need to make one of these reductions into an oxidation. So that one's going to become the oxidation. And when I do that, that minus becomes a positive. So the balanced half reaction is obtained by reversing the reaction number two and multiplying reaction number one by a factor of two. Uh, remember, we do not change when we multiply these guys. So we're going to end up with an overall cell reaction of two vanadium dioxides and eight, four H pluses and zinc gives us two vanadium oxides and two waters and two zinc pluses. And we've got an overall E naught, right? So remember, this is our standard state. We're going to adjust that by some amount based on Q. So since the cell contains components that are concentrations other than one molar, we're going to use that Nernst equation for Nernst for non-standard, where N is equal to two since two electrons are transferred. This is why all of that balancing a redox reaction junk that we did in the very beginning is important. Because sometimes you look at a reaction and you can tell this guy's going to be two. Other times, like we saw ones that had six electrons in there. So you need to know how many electrons are in there when you're doing this Nernst equation. The other thing is like this hydrogen showing up here, right? If it's balanced in acid or base, like what if you got 14 of them, right? That's going to be to the 14th power. So we can use the, still use the Nernst equation where E naught, which is what we got from before, this is our E naught for their cell, and we're going to adjust it by 0.0591 divided by 2, that was our number of electrons, and then we've got our expression for Q. So we're still looking at our products over our reactants, so zinc to the first power, vanadium oxide to the second power. We've got vanadium oxide to the second power, zinc to the first power. Our reactants vanadium dioxide to the second power, hydrogen to the fourth power, hydrogen to the fourth power, vanadium oxide to the second power. Right? It's just a regular old Q expression from before. Uh, we start plugging in the numbers. 1.76 minus 0.0591 divided by 2 times the log of Q, 
We put in our numbers for Q, it's going to be the log of 4 times 10 to the minus 5. Com keep compressing that, we get uh, 1.76 plus 0.13 volts, we get 1.89 volts out at the end. Uh, notice that this is really complicated over here on the cathode end, right? because we got a lot of stuff in there. Right, so we would separate all of those out. So it'd be a double line, and then we would have the vanadium oxide, comma, H plus, comma, the VO2. Right? So all of those would need to go in there. And then a solid line for the platinum inert electrode. So concept check. What's the difference between E and E naught? Right? So E and E naught is... E is the non-standard conditions. E naught is under standard conditions. When is E equal to zero? When our equilibrium, when our cell is in equilibrium. It is a dead battery. Just like if you were in thermal equilibrium with a room, you would be a dead person. When your cell is in equilibrium, it is also dead. When is E naught equal to zero? It's equal to zero when you got a concentration cell, and that's about it. Um, you could probably find some things that were going to work out to zero if they had the same uh, distance above and below hydrogen. Uh, just as a concept check, you make a galvanic cell at 25 degrees C, and it's got 0.1 molar nickel, and, sorry, one molar nickel and one molar silver. Uh, what is, can you sketch that cell labeling everything? All right. What is your overall cell potential? You need to look that up because these are one molar. You can just look up the table values, right? Because that's going to be an E naught for your cell. A common practical application for looking at cell potential and concentration is the pH meter. Um, so in a pH meter, that's an instrument that measures the concentration using an observed potential. Uh, you've got three main components, a standard electrode, which is going to give us one half of the reaction, a special glass electrode, that's the little bulb at the end, and then just the potentiometer that you plug it in that measures the electrode. So when you make a pH measurement, you're really measuring a voltage from an electrochemical cell and just saying, well, how does that correspond to H plus concentration, right? So you went back and said, okay, well, it's our Nernst equation says it is log of Q. Well, if H plus is one of my products, and I know E is going to be related to Q and my E cell, I can pull out what my concentration of H plus is. And so the glass electrode contains a reference solution with dilute HCl in contact with a thin glass membrane. The electrical potential of the glass electrode depends on the difference in H plus between the reference solution and the solution in which it is dipped. Uh, the electrical potential varies with the pH of the solution being tested because your H plus ion concentration changes. So this is what those look like. Um, you have seen one of these before. The, the real business end is down here at this thin-walled membrane where small cations can go through and penetrate the membrane. And then you've got this reference solution of HCl, which has a fixed H plus concentration. Um, we can make electrodes that are sensitive to other ions. Electrodes that are sensitive to the concentration of a particular ion. It's called an ion selective electrode. So the glass electrode for a pH measurement, that's an ion selective electrode. You can make ions sensitive to things like sodium, potassium, uh, ammonia by changing the composition of the glass or doing some other tricks. If you take analytical chemistry, you will find out all about those. Um, one of the things you can do is replace it with a crystal that replaces the glass membrane instead. And so here's a kind of list of um, all of the things where you can figure out what is the what kind of ion you've got. You can use the Nernst equation uh, to calculate some of our K values like we saw before. So because there is that relationship between E and G, for a cell at equilibrium, E cell is zero and Q is equal to K. Right? Applying these conditions to the Nernst equation, we can say that, well, if E for the cell at equilibrium right, is going to be zero, and then we know that Q becomes K, right? or Q became a K, and so we can say E naught is minus 0.0592 over N, 
times the log of k, and where the log of k is going to be n times e naught over 0.0592 at 25 degrees C. So if we've got a redox reaction where we've got S4O6 tetrasulfur hexoxide and chromium 2 plus go into chromium 3 plus, right? This guy is our oxidation, which means that this guy has to be our reduction. Our appropriate half reactions are going to be uh, as reductions, right? These guys are both written as reductions. The tetrasulfur hexoxide going to sulfur disulfur trioxide and the chromium going to the chromium. One of these has to become a oxidation. So which one are you going to do? This guy, right? To balance the react, we're going to balance the redox reaction, calculate E naught and K. So to obtain that balance reaction, we're going to reverse one reaction. We're going to reverse the chromium one, make it the oxidation. Now it's the oxidation. Right. We're going to multiply by two. Remember, that's not going to change our voltage. So we've got our overall cell reaction, which is important for our Nernst equation because we need to know what power are we going to take this chromium to, right? Or what power are we going to take this S2O3, right? The only one that's going to drop out is, we're not going to have, is going to be nothing because we don't have any solids or pure liquids. So they're all going to show up in there. So we've calculated our E naught value. Once we've got our E naught value, we can figure out what our log of K is. In this reaction, we've got two moles of electrons, so N is equal to two. Uh, we've got uh, two moles of chromium and two moles of SO2, three minus, so N is equal to two. So we're going to say log of K is going to be equal to N times E naught divided by 0.0591. N was two. We know E, we got measured out as point, E naught is 0.67. We got that from back over here. 0.67. We get our log of K is 22. Undo our log. K is going to be 10 to the 22.6 or 4 times 10 to the 22. It's a large K. It's not unusual for a redox reaction. You had a positive cell voltage. K should be big. Okay. Here's another example that is important for my biology friends. Okay? It's pH dependent reactions. You can turn a reaction on or off in a cell based on where it's sitting because you've got a different pH, right? So let's think about a simple example, right? Tooth decay. If I've got, you know, normal teeth and I'm just drinking pure water, probably not gonna have any cavities. If I'm drinking a lot of soda, which has a lot of acid in it, it's gonna increase my chance of getting cavities. That's a pH dependent reaction. Um, let's look at an example. So we're going to calculate the E cell. If our temperature is 25 degrees C and our pressure of uh, chlorine gas is one atmosphere, so under standard state conditions, other than everything else being at 0.1 molar. So our gases are one atmosphere, but our, our concentration of H plus is one molar. And our ionic species are going to have a concentration of 0.1 molar. And we've got this reaction where we're going to take chlorine gas uh, and manganese oxide. So we're going to look at chloride and manganese oxide. And our overall reaction, our chlorine is going to be the oxidizing reaction, right? And then our manganese is going to be the reduction. Our overall cell voltage is going to be 0.13. So if we throw that into the Nernst equation, right, we've got our E naught for our cell. And we're going to adjust it by 0.059. And our number of electrons that are involved are going to be 2 times 5. So 10 electrons that are involved. Right. And then we're going to do products over reactants. So our manganese is a product squared. Our uh, chlorine gas is a product. Um, we've got pure water. That doesn't show up in our equilibrium expression. Our reactants are going to be the manganese the hydrogen and the chloride. So we're going to do uh, 0.1 to the 10, 0.1 to the 2, and 1 to the 16 once we've balanced this guy all out. So we plug those numbers in. No, I kind of flip-flopped those, my bad. Um, so we're, <laughs> we're going to chlorine to the 10, manganese uh, oxide is to the second, H plus is to the 16. All right, we go through and we calculate that. We're going to do 0.13 minus 0.6 volts. So under one molar H plus, 
right, or a pH is zero, this is a spontaneous reaction. I've got a positive cell voltage. All right, let's take that same reaction, and now we're going to go from a pH of zero to one. So I've changed my pH, I've lowered my pH. My H plus is going to go from one molar to 0 0.1 molar. So there's the original equation up there, right? We had a one in here before, and now we're changing it from a one to a 0 0.1. When I go through and I solve the math, I still had my 0.13 volts. That was my E naught. But now we're going to subtract 0.15 volts when we do the 0.0592 over 10 log of our products over reactants. So we're going to change this number in here. And it was enough to make that cell potential negative now. And this means that it is non-spontaneous and there is no reaction that happens.